My fellow producers and beat makers, if you're looking to add DJ scratch sounds to your beats, but you don't have a turntable or a mixer or a special DJ controller in this cooking up with CR8, I'm going to show you how to pull off realistic sounding scratch effects step by step, and all you need is a regular MIDI keyboard, or you can even use your computer keyboard. This will work in any DAW, so let's jump right into it. First, you want to grab a sample. I've got it loaded in CR8 in play mode and the algorithm set on beats. Now, if we open up the zones editor, I've got it triggering on C1 on my MIDI keyboard. To assign it exclusively to your computer keyboard, here's how to do it in Ableton, in FL Studio, in Logic, and in Pro Tools. All right, now you can also assign it to any key you want. Just hit any key. You see it lights up that C0 right there. So just change the top and bottom notes here to C0, and then the root to C0, and you're good to go. Let's take it back to C1 for this example. Next thing you want to do is add LFO modulation. So I'm going to click and open M1 or Mod 1. It's got the sign mod. And down here, you want to make sure the trigger is set to free, and the mode is on loop. Next, we'll slow the rate down to a quarter. And then I'm going to bring the warp down to about 0.15. Anywhere in that area will work. And this is going to warp the speed of the modulation and make things sound less predictable. So then we'll drag and drop M1 onto the tune control, like that, and dial it up. So now it's starting to sound like a scratch already, but I'm just going to dial it back down. I just want to use this first layer to trigger the sample after the scratching. We'll get more extreme with the scratch effect on the next layer, but before that, I'm going to add more of a fluctuating vibe to it. I'm going to open up Mod 2, and here we're going to create an 8-step sequence. And what I'm going to do is just draw in some random values, and this is going to make it sound more authentic. You can take these anywhere you want. The point is not to repeat the same step twice in a row. All right? We'll bring the trigger to free mode. We'll take and drag that mod onto the tune control as well. And then when we dial that up, we add a more realistic fluctuation to the effect. Let's dial it back because, again, I'm using this layer to trigger the main sample. But on the next layer, we're going to go hard with it. So let's do that. I'm going to click and drag over the same sample onto layer 2. We'll open the zone editor and change the assignment to D1. Then back on the sample view, I'm going to bring the start point over just a little bit. Give it a slight variation from the first, and then we're going to crank up mod 1. I'm at about 40, and you can hear that scratch effect right away. Let's dial up mod 3 now to give it that fluctuation. And then I'm going to turn the seesaw on. That's this forward and reverse arrow icon right here, and that's going to emulate the sample being scratched back and forth. So then, if we take and bring over the endpoint a little more, that backspin effect is going to get quicker and quicker. Check it out. And now we get that baby scratch effect. So let's now check out these two samples with the beat. Alright, so you can see I adjusted the end position a little more just to get that reverse scratch speed sitting better with the beat. Now onto the third layer. Let's do a transformer scratch type effect. For that, we'll click and drag over layer 2. In the zone editor, I'll assign it to the next key, which is E1. And then back on the main window, I'm going to drag over the start point just a touch. And again, just to variate from the other two. Next, let's turn on the loop. I'm going to then drag over the end point to bring the loop length to about a quarter. Next, let's open up Mod 3, and here we're going to use a square LFO. Again, we'll make sure the trigger is set to free and the mode on loop. And from here, you want to bring Mod 3 to the volume control, take it all the way down, and then drag the mod all the way down to minus 100, and we get this. And if you want to make the transformer effect faster, just change the rate on the modulator. 
And now, when we combine this layer with the other two, now that's only three layers, but you can get as complex with this as you want. CR8 gives you up to eight layers. So another thing you might want to do is create another zone of samples, put together additional scratches, all within the same plug. If you enjoyed this cooking up with CR8, smash that like button and hit subscribe for more tips and tricks. If there's something specific you want me to show you with CR8, let me know in the comments below. And to learn even more about this super flexible, super musical sampler, make sure you hit up waves.com slash CR8 right now. Until next time, thank you for watching.